Welcome, everybody. Hi, this is Jim, and I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Samantha in California. Also happy to see everybody and be here. Dora. Good morning. It's um, Michelle from Oregon. Dora? Yeah, good morning. It's Dora, and I'm in Orange County, California. Oh, wonderful. And welcome, Mary, and welcome, Cher. Thank you so much for saying hello. Let's start with our opening prayer. Go ahead and breathe in. And then breathe out, close your eyes, and uncross your hands and your legs to receive grace. You can go ahead and straighten your spine if you like. If you don't feel well, that's fine. You can stay reclined. And go ahead and breathing in and breathing out. And knowing that you are surrounded by angels. That in the room that you're in, there are angels of clarity. There are screenwriting angels. Angels who help you write scripts. There are angels that help you succeed in your career. There are angels that help you with your son. There are angels that help you with your new home and your new job and moving to a new place. And there are angels that are bringing you prosperity and supporting all your friendships and taking care of all your pets. Breathing. Just letting these angels be in your house right now. They're filling up the house. They know that we have a house blessing today and they've come ready with all of their house cleansing tools. Breathing, let's call in some spirit guides to help us. We're calling in the Christ and Jesus as the Christ lives in all of us and Mother Mary and Yogananda, and Pelehonuamea, the volcano goddess, and Mother Mary, and Father and Mother God. And go ahead and invite all the souls of people who you've shared living spaces with in your past, because today we're going to clear some karma. So go ahead and invite all your past roommates and lovers and friends who've ever been in pets, who've ever been in your house, whether they're deceased or not. And today they're gonna come to bless your home and to thank you for giving them a safe shelter and space to be for that time. There are a lot of souls in this universe who want to thank you Thank you for everything you've ever done for them. And right now, allow their souls and their spirits to come into your home. Allow them today to give you the gratitude that you deserve. And allow them to bless you and thank you for every day that you have been alive and giving light into this world. Breathing, see two doors, like the door, the front door of the house in your heart. Your home is where your heart is. Go ahead and open that door, the door of your heart, and let all the thank yous from all these people around the universe flood into that front door. It's called good luck feng shui. And just let it, all the thank yous coming in through that door, just like wind. Good luck feng shui inside the door of the home of your heart. And breathing in and out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I want to welcome Thomas and Sophia and Kamala and Anna, thank you so much for coming, and Akemi. So before we begin, first of all, Happy New Year, Hawaiian style. Happy New Year. 
This is the song. All Hawaii stand together. Oni pa akako, ala na kila na kiki ni e. E ola, e ola, which means life. Na kini e. So our Hawaiian word of the week is how oli makahiki ho, which means Happy New Year. So how oli means happy. Say that after me. How oli. And then makahiki means year, so you can say that with me. Makahiki, makahiki, and then ho means new or fresh, so it's actually happy year new. And so repeat after me: How oli makahiki ho? How oli makahiki ho? That's happy new year. Now, how you sign it is. How oli? You take your open hand and you brush up your twist twice. Like your heart is excited. Like how oli? Happy? How oli? And when you sign year, you circle one fist over the other and bump. So this is the sun, and the earth goes around the sun, right? Makahiki, year. Makahiki, one year. Makahiki. That's good. And then how you sign new, which is ho new. You you're you're scooping the ground. You're shoveling dirt to plant new seeds. That's new. So ho ho new. Okay, so let's do the whole thing together. How oli makahiki ho. Okay, so today we're gonna do our house blessing, and it's kind of an involved process. So let's get started. First, let me talk about what a house blessing is. The purpose of a house blessing is to bless your living space, to cleanse it of bad memories, negative energies, and to fill it up with all these good luck energies where you can flourish living there. So maybe you inherited your childhood home and you need closure. Maybe you're in a new home. And you've never talked to your house before and told it exactly what its purpose is. So it's just looking at you like, "What am I supposed to do? How can I help you?" Maybe you're in a home that you've been living in for years and you've never renewed the energy. So the energy of all your old roommates and people who lived in your house—they're stuck in the walls and in the carpet. Like a friend of mine said, she went over to this guy's house and she could smell his ex-girlfriend's perfume in the lampshade. Okay, that's an example. Now in India, there's a place called the Healing Temple, and it is claimed that only words of life, love, and peace have been given expression in this temple since its erection, and the vibrations are so potent that nearly all who pass through the temple are instantly healed. And it's also claimed that the words life, love, and peace Have been used and sent out so long from this temple, and the vibrations emanating from them are so strong that if you go there and you say anything that's inharmonious or imperfect, it doesn't have any power. Okay, so that's another example. Now, a house blessing makes sure that that energy, the vibrations in your house, benefit you. And every religion in the world has some form of house blessing, house clearing, house cleansing, or space clearing. In Catholicism, this this guy is he, he he's tapping. He's like putting a little scripture on top of the doorway. But usually, the priest sprinkles holy water on the house and whoever lives there. And in Hinduism, they walk a cow through all the rooms of a house and boil milk. In Buddhism, they use one fresh red fish, rice with the zuki beans, sake, an op- unopened bag of rice, and a bag of rock salt. And in Hawaii, we sprinkle ocean water, we chant, we plant tea leaves around the house to protect it. So during Hurricane Aniki in 1992, where the whole island of Kauai was decimated, a lot of local people claimed that. Their house was still standing because they had tea leaves all around it, and it was kind of true because if you drove around. You definitely saw the houses that were standing had tea leaves planted in the yard. So house blessings are in the Bible. David prayed to God. He said, 
Now be pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever in your sight, for you, Sovereign Lord, have spoken. And with your blessing, the house of your servant will be blessed forever. And another house blessing is found in Isaiah, where he says, My people will live in peaceful dwelling places, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. And then in Proverbs it says, By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. Through knowledge its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. So let's, let's go ahead. Let's start our house blessing ritual. It's a lot of steps. I hope you have your journal because you got to do a little bit of work. Okay. Okay. Very, step one, think of your living space. So it can be your house, your apartment, your condo, or your room. Like if you live in a, you rent a room in a hotel or you're in transitional housing. If you're in a military barracks or a college dorm, then, then it's your bunk bed. My friend Wendell lives in a van, so he'd think of his van. If you couch surf in someone else's home, then think of your couch, not their whole home. And if you're a drifter, you know, you're a nomad who's backpacking across the country, then just think of your backpack or your sleeping bag and your tent. If you live on a boat, think of your boat. So don't think about the entire harbor with all the boats or the public restroom where you shower. Just, just think of your boat. So think of your personal living space right now and write, just write down what it is. Like my home is my, it's my van, it's my boat, it's my room. Got it. Um, step two. Now when you think of your living space, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? When you think of your home and where you live, what do you think of? Like, what does your personal living space mean to you? So for example, you're right, my home is, is it your sanctuary, your sacred space? Is it a fortress? It's, it's safety where you can lock yourself inside and be protected. Is it a party house, a gathering place? People come to socialize, they eat, they drink, they just love getting get together there. Or do you see your home as an extension of your body? It's old, it constantly needs fixing. Or does your house represent your relationships? For example, every time you were married, you lived in a big home. Every time you were single, you lived in a teeny tiny place. So is it a reflection of your social status, of your income? So what does your home represent to you? What does it offer you or mean to you? What's it extension of? Is it creativity? Is it growth? Is it conflict? Is it feeling trapped? What is it? And write that in your journal. My home is. All right, so next step is we got to degunk your house. So um, just like we degunked your soul during our baptism ceremony last month, today we're going to degunk your living space. So degunk means to take the energies that you don't want, which are gunking up your living space, and spring clean them gone. So I want you to make a list of begones what you want to banish or begone from your living space. And, and mostly I'm talking about bad memories. Maybe it's your memories of fighting with your teenage children or something abusive happened there. Or maybe it's the struggle to pay rent every month. Maybe it's your ex. So remember what gunk is. It's just the gunk that gunks up an accumulated stress from the daily wear and tear of life. It's just a, a buildup of oldy moldy energies. So just write down your list of begones. Whatever happened in this living space, you wanna erase all your bad memories, just write them down. Okay, good. Okay, so you have your list of begones. 
of things that you want. This is not the place for these things in your home. Okay, so now we're going to do a meditation where we cremate your begones. So go ahead and you hold your list of begones in your hand or hold them in your lap and go ahead and close your eyes and breathe in and breathe out. Imagining that you are surrounded by hundreds of healing angels. They're emerald green in color. Oh, wow. Uh, here comes some um, flaming red angels. Twelve of them. Ooh. Okay. What kind of angels are these flaming red angels? Are these uh, cremation angels? They're red hot. They are purification angels. See yourself next to a big giant fire, the refiner's fire. And all of these red hot angels next to this fire represent the sacred flame. Wow, and, and look, coming out of the coals, the hot coals, is the keeper of the sacred flame, the Hawaiian volcano goddess, Pele. And she's totally naked. Her hair is black dreadlocks of molten lava, and there's sort of a gray smoke around her whole body. And here you are, surrounded by hundreds of green healing angels. Now in your mind, imagine yourself stepping forward. And in the center of the circle, there's 12 red hot flaming angels, Pele the volcano goddess. And in the center is a funeral pyre, a funeral pyre, which is just a place where you cremate dead memories. We're going to burn your begones and all your bad memories on this funeral pyre. And so you want to notice what it looks like. Is it wood? Is it hot coals? Is it a big hole or is it like a mountain that you have to climb to the top to? Now these begones, your memories, Say goodbye, kiss them goodbye, they're not coming back. And you can throw them one by one very nicely into the fire pit, or you can just dump them. But go ahead and, and do it however you want. Go ahead and throw your begones and all of those memories right into the funeral pyre. And to notice if they're burning right away or if they're burning slowly, if they incinerate instantly or if they give off a lot of smoke. Are they willing to die or are they hanging on? And how do you feel watching your bad memories burn? Do you feel love? Do you feel peace? Do you feel rage? Or do you feel nothing? Okay, and now your begones are burnt and the red flaming angels are yelping their warrior cry. Begone, begone, begone. They're all done. Whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. So when we're done here today, you can, if you want, burn those pages where you wrote your begones in a safe environment like your fireplace or a metal bowl outside your house and not in a windy area. Just safely sort of burn the bad memories of, of your house. Okay, let me let you journal what you saw in your meditation.
And then if anyone wants to share what they saw in their meditation, you can go ahead and unmute. I'll go ahead and share. Like, um, you know, I had this like big wooden, giant wooden fire, um, like in Game of Thrones. And it's kind of funny because um, you talked about Pele, the, the volcano goddess coming out of the fire, reminded me of Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was just like, you know, once that, once I tossed, those uh, begons into the fire, into the giant pyre. Uh, it was just relief, like, goodbye, thanks. Thanks for your service. And um, ready to move on. So great. Felt good. So thank you. Awesome. Okay, great. Now we're going to move to the next step. So you know what ashes and, and charcoal do, right? They clean the soil. So whenever you get food poisoning or you might drink too much alcohol, you, you can actually go to the health food store and you can get charcoal pills and you can swallow them and it soaks up the poison in your body. And charcoal is very purifying to whatever you add to it. And in this case, soil. Your home was just a moment ago, a funeral pyre of bad memories that were burning. And now it's this garden with this purified, cleansed soil in it. So let's, let's plant a seed. What do you want for this year, 2023? What are you manifesting? So this is kind of like your New Year's resolution, or it could be your goals. Like, do you have a relationship goal? or health goal, an abundance goal, and try to keep it focused on, even if you have a lot of goals, try to keep it focused on one thing. Because if you stay focused on growing one seed, that seed will, will grow into a flower that has many seeds. So for example, if you just stay focused on health, everything else follows. Naturally, your relationships, your finances get better. So try to focus on that one seed that begets all other seeds. So what is that one seed that's going to that's going to do it for you in 2023? What's your goal and what you sh what are you manifesting? And when you have it right, 2023 is my year of and fill in the blank. It's my year of health, it's my year of love or whatever. Okay, you have that. That's good. Okay, so now we're going to prepare your blessing. So in step one, you define what your living space is, like my living space, my home is my condo or something. In step two, you wrote what your living space or your home means to you, like my home is peace or my home is romance. Now in step five, you wrote what you're manifesting this year. 2023 is my year of partnership or my year of career okay so now you just have to choose some angels do you want some money angels do you want some love angels do you want healing angels do you want motivation angels um, i have instruction angels they just give me instructions so just write down what kind of angels you want to be hovering around your house this whole year you want what kind of angels you want in your house Okay, so then here is how you write your blessing. You write, may my, and then put your living space, like my house, my van, my boat, may my, whatever, room. Be protected and blessed with, and then write that energy of what your house means to you. Peace, love, security, you know, whatever you wrote about what your house means to me. Be protected and blessed with that energy.
And then you're going to write, I welcome and invite, and then the type of angels, blank angels, so healing angels, or I welcome and invite love angels, creativity angels. And then to co-create, and then that's where you're writing what you're going to manifest this year, your New Year's manifestation, to co-create abundance in my home, to co-create love in my home. So here's an example, like, may my condo be protected and blessed with inner peace. I welcome and invite money angels to co-create abundance in my home. Okay, whenever you're ready to share, you can just unmute. Okay, Thomas. Uh, let's see. Uh, may my house be protected and blessed with tranquility, peace, warmth, and welcoming. I welcome and invite prosperity, wealth, and money angels to create abundance, wealth, joy in my home. Okay, that's perfect. <laughs> How do you feel? Awesome. Awesome, great. Okay, Sophia? I always choose, like, ask for a lot of angels. So, like, different types. Um, May my first floor of 10 Concord Street in Natick be protected and blessed with so much space. I welcome and invite angels of intuition, protection, creativity, abundance, love, discipline, healing to co-create well-being in my home. Mm. Amen. Amen. Okay, so when we end our Sunday service today, this is how you're going to take what you did in our Sunday service and go to your house and do it in person. Um, I would love to come to your house with a drum circle and have the fire and do it, but since we're virtual, we're not, we're not doing that yet. So the blessing is two parts. The first is removing the negative energy. The second is adding positive energy. So to remove negative energy from your home, you can use a bundle of dried sage um, that I have here, um, or you can, you can use incense, or you can use a candle or an essential oil diffuser. And the reason why you're using those elements is because they, those elements have a cleansing effect. They clean negative ions out of the air. And what you do is you go from room to room in your home, or you just go all around your living space. If you live out of a backpack, just, you know, get the smoke all around your backpack. And make sure the smoke goes everywhere to neutralize the leftover begone energy imprints in your living space. And then to add the positive energy to your home, you need a blessing stick. I didn't tell you that. So you kind of need a blessing wand. Like I have a, it can be a tree branch, a flower, a plant. I, I'm using a Hawaiian tea leaf. So you need just, just get a blessing wand that's organic, made of the earth. <clears throat> and what you do is you're going to dip it in filtered water sprinkled with sea salt or essential oils because all those things, again, have very neutralizing effects. So I... I have frankincense, so I put like a couple drops of that in some filtered water. And then what you do, blessing, you always have to have water because water is birth. And so you go from room to room saying your blessing and, and you just kind of sprinkle and you say, uh, you know, my condo, I, you are protected and I bless you with tranquility and peace. And, you know, you say your blessing from room to room, you kind of sprinkle it around. So any thoughts? What kind of different 
leaves or blessing stick would you use? I mean, I know Catholics have used palms before, so. Well, you can use anything. It's nice to use rosemary. Um, but but basically use what's in your environment because and so this is what an ancient Russian race called the Vedrus believe that the plants especially if you have a personal relationship with them that you touch them and a lot of them would spit on the seed or um, kind of wash their body sweat and water their plants with water mixed with body sweat. And the plants, what they do is they absorb your DNA and they absorb your personal information through your body fluids. And at night, they talk to the stars and they tell your, the stars all your problems. And every now and then, the, the plant will either produce a fruit or a leaf for you to eat that is medicine specifically for your body. And it knows that based on the body fluids that you watered it with. So the plants around your house, especially if you talk to them, are intelligent. They see you come in and out every day like another boyfriend. Look at that one. That one's just, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. They know your issues. I mean, they sit there and they watch you all day long. Oh, she's not even going to. I don't think so. Look at, watch this. They know you. And so when you use them to bless your space, they have that information. They know your problems, so then they know how to cure you. And they talk to the stars at night and they're like, well, I know, I know, but you know, what? <laughs> you know, and the stars also reflect back and give them information. So the theory in Hinduism is that the sun actually is an absorber of light and it absorbs all the love vibrations from the planet Earth and reflects that love back to us to give us life. It is a reflection of our love, just like the theory with pets is. Sometimes your pets are grumpy and sometimes they're irritating and sometimes they're loving. They're just reflecting your love back to them because they're so pure. Planets do that and plants do that and God designed it to mirror our soul. And so I think you should use the plants around your house, but does someone else have an opinion about that? I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. well, I have a peace, peace lily behind me. So can I use a, a leaf from the peace lily? Yeah, as your blessing wand. Oh, okay. yeah, spread that good stuff. <laughs> and then my, I have a two-part question. Second question is, with the essential oils, do certain essential oils represent like, uh, like financial or business or, you know, that type of thing or? No, because they're mostly for healing your body. Like certain things are for skin rashes and certain things are for swelling and inflammation. Frankincense is used for everything. It's also very expensive. Um, but no, there's none specifically for wealth because they're just medicinal. Mm -hmm. But somebody else is, what, would disagree with me and say, of course there's some money. <laughs> so you... <laughs> That's just my opinion. That's the biggie. I'm sorry. Did okay. I understand you to say to, to Brother Thomas <clears throat> that the frankincense oil could be our blessing oil? Do we have to put it on something and, 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 and walk around the house with it? Or can we just use the frankincense oil bottle? Or how do we do that? Or did I understand put, it correctly? Just put two or three drops in a bowl of water because it's so strong you want to dilute it and just the whole bowl just one or two drops and you'll smell it immediately and then you dip your blessing wand in it and sprinkle your house and say your blessing while you sprinkle while you sprinkle every room sprinkle your door okay all right thank you The plants that are often growing around the home or around where we are, whether it's like regional or around the home, are often the plants that we need, are the medicines that we need. Um, and so a smoker might have like lots of burdock root growing or burdock growing around the home, um, which is just what they need. Um, and so uh, that's just something to add to that. And the last thing I'll say in terms of like practices for picking plants at all, um, I have learned to like ask the plant, whether it's a house plant 
or a plant growing outside in the wild, but just like before picking the flower or the leaf or the branch or even pruning, you know, big pruning to just like commune with that for a moment and ask. And sometimes like I've experienced like going to go pick flowers and sometimes like that does not want to be like that beautiful flower doesn't want to be picked. So I'm not going to pick it. Um, but when I'm harvesting things, um, I do ask first. Mm. It's a very Hawaiian thing to do. <laughs> mm. Wonderful. Any more comments? Yeah, I don't mean to belabor the point, but I'm still, I'm still thinking of how the essential oils might, whether they relate to the different chakras. I, so I'll email you those books. I'll put them in the church newsletter, actually, and I'll email everyone the books. But they do. They do correspond to different chakras, um, and they're all very specific. Yeah, I'm thinking also that they're connected with the chakras, but the chakras also can connect with different areas of your life where you may be blocked or. I'm not sure if it goes by chakras. It usually goes by emotions and health issues. So I have a question. So you mentioned also yes. we can use salt. Sea salt, not table salt. Sea salt. Yeah. Which, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's a uh, different than essential oil. Like uh, in my culture, yeah. and you want salt is more like a cleansing water. Kind of thing. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So essential oils is also cleansing and detoxing. And so is salt. Um, but essential oil has the soul of the plant in it. So rose is usually known for beauty. Um, there are certain oils that help inflammation, like frankincense. And then you have the tree oils, like eucalyptus and fir and cedar. And those are sort of these masculine uh, forest scents. And then you have the flower scents. So flowers are more for beauty. These masculine tree scents are more for strength. And then, of course, you have the spiritual oils, frankincense and myrrh, that are meant to bless or to anoint you. They're all used for different things. Um, but uh, also in Hawaii, they use sea salt because it's cleansing. I like the, okay, so flowers spiritually represent blessings. So when you do an essential oil, you're essentially adding flowers. I see what you mean, Akemi, that salt would be used to cleanse, not to bless. But the reason why we use salt water is because it represents birth, amniotic fluid. Pastor, I had begun, and you tell me if I'm wrong, to... Uh, want to know about the uh am i saying it right chakras i have the, the stones mm -hmm. okay i have the different stones but i never used them because i was afraid of them so probably people on this call know more about the chakras than i do but chakras have, have been in um studied for thousands of years and generally what it is it's an energy centers of the body so the first chakra is at the base of your spine and that chakra is about survival the second chakra which is in your na'al your belly button is um sex and love chakra your third chakra which is right in the middle of your solar plexus is your willpower and your fourth chakra is your heart chakra your fifth is your throat your sixth is your intuition, and they believe there is a seventh chakra, which is your crown, your connection to God. In the Hawaiian archipelago, the Hawaiians believe that every island corresponds to a chakra and has that energy, and it's true. Big island is first chakra. You go there and you feel grounded. You feel grounded. Second chakra is Maui, Maui. If you go to Maui and you're in a relationship, y'all will break up. It is drama, relationship island. <laughs> Third island is Oahu. Willpower, business, success. Look at Oahu. It looks like Singapore. It's covered in concrete, high-rise buildings. Business, business, business. Fourth chakra is Molokai. Fifth chakra, I believe, is Lanai, which is ironic because it's owned, 98% of it is owned by Larry Ellison. Um, and sixth chakra is Kauai the island of dreams, my island. And seventh chakra 
they believe it is Ni'ihau, Ni'ihau, the Forbidden Island. You're not allowed to go there because it's privately owned by the Robinson family, and they only allow their family, and uh, you have to be pure blood Native Hawaiian. Now, there were 3 million Native Hawaiians when the first white man landed Captain Cook, and now there are less than 3,000 with any part Hawaiian blood because we basically went extinct. So those are the seven chakras. Hawaiians believe they correspond to the seven islands. I say, Catherine, uh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus wasn't afraid of the stone. He just moved it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yes, sir. I receive it. <laughs> Hawaiians are deep believers in chakra, and you go to the island that corresponds with your chakra that is blocked, and the energy of the island will unblock it, and it will. I mean, if you're sensitive and open enough, you go to that island, you will experience the problems of that chakra or the healing that that chakra needs. Yeah, it's a very spiritual place. <clears throat> Okay, so let's do our closing prayer, shall we? Go ahead and um, close your eyes and breathe in and breathe out and see now that your home is filled with all these angels that you invited and they're ready to bless your, your whole year, every day of every year that you're in this living space they're ready to bless you with that energy that you are manifesting in 2023 and the goals that you're manifesting in 2023, that they're creating the energies to support you to accomplish what you need. When you leave your home and you come back to your home, you're like, ah, oh, the energy is there to support you. Breathing now, we want to thank our spirit guides, Yogananda and Pele Honuamea, and Father and Mother God, and Jesus Christ, and Mother Mary, and all of the souls that have come to thank you for helping them with your energy, for being a home for someone else. You are very loved. Right now, open the door to your heart and let all that love in. Just see it flowing in like birds and like wind and like flowers and like feng shui. All that love coming into your heart and coming into your home. And we pray with the protection of the angels that anything negative happening in your home is immediately neutralized and taken out of your home. It is immediately healed, and the lesson that you needed to learn, you learn it quickly, and immediately the angels will come and bring in that wonderful energy again. We pray that your home be protected, completely protected for the whole year of 2023, and give you prosperity and creativity and love and peace and joy, and may it be your sanctuary of wisdom and personal growth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so now is our time, our round of goodbyes. Uh, thank you, Pastor Vicki, for this service. Um, I, was, I was kind of laughing because when I look around the house, I got a couple of cactuses around here, but then I started to think about what's outside and uh, lots of cedar. So I was like, oh yeah, just, I was bringing that in. And then you mentioned cedar, bring in some cedar branches. So good stuff. Great way to start the new year with blessing your house and your, be it your uh, sanctuary. Well, great session. Thank you, Pastor Vicki, for all that you pour into us. And the part that I did get, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Happy New Year to everyone. I love you all. Yeah, I'm going to use that um, cleansing and then my sanctuary. Like uh, um, Samantha mentioned, I mentioned sanctuary, peaceful place. 
and I belong here. So um, I will do that. And hopefully that also helps my four cats to be a little bit calmer than acting like ADHD. <laughs> so um, I will keep you updated. But thank you so much and have a nice week. Yeah, I thought this was great. Um, it kind of adds to um, kind of the focus I have already of like looking at each each room of my home as having a different theme or purpose and including the I include the front yard and the backyard as well I consider them rooms um, and then I also equate that to the rooms of your house and the rooms of your life um, I also want to thank uh, Sophia for uh, mentioning um, asking the plant to be able to use that. Appreciate that. I love you all so much. Thank you, Pastor Vicki, and just thank you everyone for being here and for participating. I just, I'm just so thankful that we have this uh, community, this spiritual community, faith community. So um, happy new year. Thank you, Pastor Vicki. This turned out to be the, just the perfect thing for me because I hunk her down at home to stay out of the rain this whole entire weekend. And uh, and I actually, one of the things that I'm praying for is uh, for letting go and decluttering angels to help me uh, make even a better space in my home. So, Happy New Year, everyone. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Anna, for joining us and Cher and Mary and Kamala. Um, Michelle, um, thank you for joining us for our house blessing ceremony. Thank you.